Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, the first of our half term uh, from the Vicar Studies. We're doing something slightly different, as we often do in the holidays. We're coming right to the end of this first half of Isaiah uh, this week. Uh, we have a guest preacher coming to preach for us on Sunday uh, from Ferriby, uh, Adam Young, who's going to do a great job for us, I think. So we thought it'd be a good time, chance for us to look back over the first 39 chapters of Isaiah and pick up some of the big ideas from representative texts. And this morning we're going to right back to chapter 2 and we're going to look at um, that first vision of uh, of the great uh, mountain of the Lord. We've gone back there frequently as we've preached through Isaiah because it's such a, a visceral and powerful image. Remember chapter 1, God's people are right in a mess doing their religious duty but no real spiritual heart, not listening to God and, and, and plundering each other and treating each other very poorly. And we get that first vision of what it takes to restore um, right order and goodness and purity to the, the kingdom of God. So let's have a, a read together of chapter 2 verses uh, 2 through 4, about maybe 5. Let's go to verse 5 I think. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his way, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. That, that last appeal in verse 5 there is a present tense. Um, let's do this. Given where we're going, Let's walk in the light of the Lord. Let's listen to the word of God. Let's, let's listen to what he says through Jesus and go that way, given where this whole of human history is going. So in the last days, something cataclysmic is going to happen. The mountain is going to be made taller than all the other mountains. That, that is the, the power, the authority, the, um, the strength of God's mountain will be seen to be bigger than all the other mountains. Now, the mountain of Jerusalem and the, and the mount where the, the temple was isn't a particularly tall mountain. It, it's on a high hill, but it's not Everest, is it? But some, somehow God is going to cause this sort of reshaping of the world so that it is clear to everyone that the, the temple where he his name dwells is the central power, the central uh, place in the world. And the effect of uh, the rising up of the, the, the temple and God's name being central is that people from all over the world will say to one another, let's go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let's, let's, why? We want to learn from his, his voice. We want to hear his voice, learn his ways, walk in his paths. There is something about the establishment of God's uh, kingdom that uh, people see its goodness and want to go and be taught God's word. The nations will come. The nation of Israel has, is falling away from God, but the nations, together with the remnant of God's people, will gather before the Lord and walk in his ways. They'll listen to him. He will establish justice and righteousness. How, how often we've heard this. He'll bring an end to warfare. All that is dark and hard about the world in which they lived will be brought to an end. But it starts with the restoration of people to God to listen to his voice and walk in his ways. And so what does Isaiah say? Come on then, God's people. Come on then, you, you faithful remnant in an unfaithful nation. Will you listen to God now? And will you come to him, even though the world doesn't yet see that, that mountain raised up? We see it with the eyes of faith. We're going that way. Can we, can we walk in his ways? Can we listen to him now? Can we walk in, in the light of God, not in the darkness of the nations, which is where chapter 8 gets us? So that's a question for us, isn't it? Um, as we've seen that idea unpacked, as we've seen more and more images of, of the vineyard and the fruitful land and, and so on, and we've seen more and more images of God uh, bringing his people 
to that land through a judgment on their unfaithfulness. The question is, are we going to be the remnant? Are we going to be that part of God's people who are listening to his voice and walking in his ways? Are we prepared to go where he goes? Or will we go our own way, wearing the the, the, the mask of Christian faithfulness, but actually going where we want to go? That's the challenge for us. But it's a challenge that is tied to and, and empowered by an incredible hope, an incredible transformation that God is laying before us. I'm going to ask you to, 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 to reflect on that. Let me pray for us first. Heavenly Father, thank you for the vision of that mountain and, and the nation streaming to you. And we, we recognise that there are people streaming to you from all over the world. And we long that many would stream to you in our part of the world. Or bring revival, we pray. And, and please help us to be agents of that change as we, uh, as we live in light of your word and follow your ways and, and show the world what a good thing it is to be among your people. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.